Good morning. It is my pleasure again to be worshiping with you this morning. We are celebrating today Jesus' ascension into heaven, which actually occurred on Thursday because it's 40 days from Easter. So in, in, our, in the Bible, there are 40 days when Jesus appears to the disciples and, um, and others. And then on the day of the ascension, he says what he says. You just heard it in Luke. Let's hear again another kind of angle from it written by the same author. Of course, in Luke, he was telling the stories of what happened with Jesus and it ends that story of, of the disciples with Jesus. And this is the beginning of now what? This is the beginning of what the disciples do after. So let's listen to Acts 1 verses 1 through 11. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote all about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles when he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And he replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. There it is. Now let's pray. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, my rock and my redeemer. Anyway, texts like this can be a little scary because they're very, very mystical, as all of the Eastertide texts are. Easter itself, super mystical. Like, these things don't happen normally. People don't die and then, and then resurrect and then be fully human and you can touch them and then also be able to go through walls into locked rooms or show up miles away from where they were last seen. You know, it's like, it's, it's hard for us because it's not... It's not something science can, can explain. And so we wrestle with, do we take this like literally, like this literally happened and literally Jesus is going to come down on a cloud or maybe coming in the same way as you saw him go is just mysteriously. I don't know what that means. So we could take it that way or we could take it completely the other way and say, well, it's just representative. It's just allegorical of something bigger. Or we could be somewhere in the middle, which is, I think, where I am. Um, uh, mystical things happen and things that can't be explained away. Um, and they lead us towards something bigger and towards transformation. And this is why this text and, and the Luke text speak to me, uh, particularly at this time in history. So if we can just use our imaginations a little bit and, um, and pretend that we are back in that place of both the Lucan text and this Acts text. And we are there with them. We could imagine ourselves as one of the disciples or we could be one of those people that were with the disciples, but there to see this happening. So for the last 40 days, it has not been particularly easy. Um, Easter, as we remember, was ama an amazing thing, but only in hindsight was it amazing. If you were there at the time, you were in a city that was rioting and you were scared for your life. And your best friend and leader and the person who made you feel worthy and the person who transformed you and 
completely changed your view of life, that person being Jesus, has been murdered and is gone but not gone. And you're really realizing truly much more fully the divinity of, of him because now he is doing these mystical things for the last 40 days where when you're at your lowest, there he appears and he's real and you can hug him and you can feel his hands and you can eat um, some fish with him or whatever, right? And now there you are like standing there looking up at the sky saying, now what? It must have been the worst feeling ever. Some of these people left their livelihoods and left their families following Jesus. So it could be that following someone who was just a someone that was extremely uh, charismatic and they did transform you, once they're gone, they're gone. Jesus though says he's not really gone. Uh, a spirit is, is coming and, and that spirit he told us many times before he even was crucified, that spirit will indwell us. That spirit binds us to God, binds us to Jesus, binds us to one another. Still though, <laughs> the reality is, what are they gonna do? Where are they gonna go? The whole book of Acts is about the beginning of figuring out how that's going to work. And this does set us up for next week's celebration, which is 50 days from Easter, which is the Pentecost or the Jewish festival of the booths. And that is when an event is going to happen that really makes folk realize where this needs to go. And we've got a little tip off here. You know, he told them to stay in Jerusalem at first, right? Don't stay in Jerusalem. And then he says, you're gonna be my witness in Jerusalem and in Judea, in the north, in Samaria, the part of the north where they just hate those people, and to the ends of the earth. So we're realizing now that this transformation that we felt when Jesus was with us, we're now going to be responsible for bringing that out to the places that are farther from home that are in other, this is not a message just for this time and this place, but everywhere. We're in a similar lost state, many of us, because as the restrictions due to COVID-19 continue, even though there may be a lifting, life is different and church is going to be different. I think for me, the biggest thing in this last week was realizing that we are not going to be able to sing together for a really long time. Singing, we, we, we just bring so much air in and push so much air out. And, um, and, and singing, unfortunately, has um, been proven to be, choirs have proven to be a place where, um, where it has spread quite badly. So even if we were allowed to um, slowly make our way back into sanctuaries, we have been told it is really not wise to have any singing at all. For me, that's huge because that's so much of what I do and who I am and how I worship and how I pray and how I have learned to harmonize with other people is to literally harmonize with other people. And uh, yeah, it's just very, very strange. So we are looking up to the church that seems to be disappearing at a fast rate into the heavens on a cloud going, wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> You're going? How? This is what we've depended on. This is what we've known. This is what, we, we can't do this without it being the way that we've known. Um, but it's not going away. It's coming back and it's coming back in a different way. And it's not that the Holy Spirit is just going to tell us what to do, just like we're doing now with having videos, video sermons and video services. We did think, okay, how are we going to be together? How are we going to reach out? But it's not done. It's not over. What we knew is not going to be 
um, viable. And so we need to together look and say, we're in this together. This is how we've been transformed. How do we continue to transform? It's a scary time, a scary time. And this is a scary text. If you think of yourself being there, watching your friend say, okay, this is it. I'm really going for good now and disappearing on a cloud. It's not something you see every day and it's kind of scary. But the hope and the promise is that there's going to be something bigger, that it's going to come. It's going to not just fill a space, but fill every space. And it's going to create in us an energy that allows us to move out to the places where we do not know. And we've never been. And we're going to take that message of transformation out to those places. It's a scary time but we are not alone and we have each other and we have our brains and we have this amazing Holy Spirit that lets us know always that we are loved. Let's pray. Amazing God, we hear these texts and when we delve into them, they are disturbing. Help us to be disturbed in the way that the disciples were disturbed, sad, and wondering, but at the same time, trusting and knowing that your love is with us, that your spirit is in us and will move us in ways that where we can take all the gifts and talents that you have given us and use them in the ways that you wish. Amen. All right. I have a hymn that I would like to, to teach to you. Um, it's a beautiful hymn to be sung with other people. But at this time, we sing it in our homes with other people, but alone. And um, it is from a community called Peze in France. And, um, and it's sort of like a camp in a way. It's, it was a place where a lot of young people um, would go to sort of um, find their faith and, and meet people from all around the world. And they, you, they have services throughout the whole day. And, um, and I'd like to teach this song to you in Spanish. It is called, in English, it's called Nothing Can Trouble. But they have songs there in all different languages because there's people from all over the world coming. And, and nothing can trouble, nothing can harm you. Um, when you're with God, nothing can harm you is pretty much what it's saying. But it's got such a lovely um, tune and it's a chant. And it's a lovely thing to learn and memorize because you can sing it over and over again at a time when you need to be um, soothed. And it goes like this. Nada te turbe, nada te spante, quen Dios tene, nada le falta, nada te turbe, Nada te spante, solo Dios basta. Isn't that pretty? So we'll sing it three times. I'll have the words underneath and um, just try it. <laughs> Even though it's in Spanish, I don't speak Spanish either, but there's just something really pretty about it sung in Spanish. So, um, so let's try it. Nada te turbe, nada te spanta, quen a Dios tene, nada le falta, nada te turbe, nada te spanta, solo Dios basta. Nada te turbe, nada te spante, quere Dios tene, 
that was beautiful. It's a great one to know and to, to sing over and over and over again. It is very, very soothing. Let's now, um, in that soothing place, um, go into prayer together. Again, using our imaginations as we did with the text, I want you to imagine yourself with your friends. That could be imagining yourself in the church, or that could be imagining yourself in a beautiful field somewhere, and just imagining yourself with them. And know that those people that make up this church community care for you and want you to be happy, and care for you and want you to be using the gifts that God gave you in the ways that you can bring blessing to others. And as a church family, there are so many things that you have done and that you still do and that you will continue to do that bless your community. Let them know that they are not alone and that they are loved and that God has something bigger in store for them as well. So let's just relax in this place where we are thinking of those people. So breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth and relax yourself into your place and be in this exact moment at this time knowing that those friends from church that you love are with you too. And now let us pray. Amazing God of three, amazing God who has never ever at any time left us. Hear us in our constant broken state and know how much we are appreciative of all that you have given us. We pray that at this time of the whole world being crippled by a virus, that you be felt, your presence be so known by all of us. We ask that those who are suffering or who are sick feel your love for those grieving for any reason know that they are not alone. We ask that for those people who we can help nearby that we with creativity realize the ways in which we can do that, that are so different from the ways we would have before this virus came about. We pray for the leaders of nations. We pray that they put the safety and the health of their people first. We pray for this nation. We pray for the leaders of this nation. We pray with great thankfulness for what this country is. In the places where it doesn't do things as well as it could, we have a system that allows us to fix that. We have a system that allows everyone's voice to be heard. Although there are other countries that now come close, we were the experiment in freedom. We need to remember to be thankful for that. As wrong as sometimes we feel decisions are, are made by certain people that might be in government, we have a government that we can change. We, we, can, we can move that to be the way in which we would like. And we have to remember that that's worth dying for and that many people have died for it. And on tomorrow's Memorial Day, we need to take some time to really be thankful, Lord, for the sacrifices that other humans have made and for what we believe to be the insight that you have given us to make a place that was more equitable and more free. We ask that for those people who are shut-ins, for those people who are suffering, that are within our help, we can help them, God. We pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's sing together a closing hymn, 
Number 543, O Christ, surround me. And for a benediction, I ask that this week you look again at these texts that talk about Jesus is moving to a place, a different reality in which we know him that gives us more responsibility in how we move forward. As we prepare for the celebration of Pentecost this week, be thinking of the ways in which church is working now, the ways in which you, as the church, are working now and differently from how it was before, but you are called by the Holy Spirit to bless other people because you have been blessed. Amen. Have a lovely, lovely week.